Hey everybody, Jeremy here. So today I wanted to do a little bit of a moto vlog. Got a couple of things that's on my mind. And then also I wanted to check out this little um, setup that I have here, this recording setup. So for the camera, I'm using the DJI Osmo Action, but for the microphone, I'm using a Rode Wireless Go 2. Um, there was an update, I think in 2021, that allowed you to use the transmitters as a standalone microphone. So I have that attached to the chin skirt of my helmet, and that's attached with a strong magnet. So hopefully it doesn't fall off, and hopefully it sounds good. I got like the little dead cat windscreen thing on it as well. And I'm just going to be rolling through some neighborhoods that I haven't been to before that I'm not really familiar with because, you know, I like to people watch and, you know, just take a look at all the nice houses and stuff. And while I just sort of shoot the breeze with you guys. All right. So uh, let's turn up here. Let's see what's back here. So the topic that I wanted to talk about today is just all about toy stuff, you know, for fellow toy collectors and every everybody out there. Um, and in particular, YouTube creators. So, it was on my mind lately that if you've looked at, you know, toy channels on YouTube for like the past year or so, if this is something that you do pretty frequently, you're probably familiar with that channel, Collector's Crush, that came on the scene maybe about a year ago, maybe a little bit more. And they became so popular so quick you know in my opinion definitely one of the fastest growing toy youtube channels um in recent memory and part of the reason why they were so popular because you had the star of the show the young lady and she was her name i think her name was miranda and she was really she was really cool because you know we don't have a lot of you know women in this space that you know put themselves out there and and and, and show toys and show themselves and stuff like that so she had that going for her. she's also really attractive so that you know attracted a lot of guys as well they had some really uh suggestive thumbnails that worked nothing against that at all and um you know, and, and they just seemed like they were just pretty cool people, you know, it was like a, a guy and a girl, I think they were in a relationship, and you know, they're just doing the stuff that everyone else does. Hunt toys, review toys, they like toys, you know, it was great, this is what we do. And they had gotten a whole bunch of subs really, really quickly, quickly built up a community, a community of well-wishers, and I'm also sure a, a community of haters as well. But then, all of a sudden, they just disappeared just fell off the face of the earth hopefully not literally it was probably about nine months ago is when that last upload was uh was put on the channel but since then you know they've just completely gone off the radar no videos no community posts um they also had an instagram page that they uh that they kept up with but that kind of stopped too And so it made me like really wonder, like, man, I wonder what happened to those guys, you know? And I know a lot of people who looked at their channel was wondering what happened to them as well. And it just made me start to think about how messed up it is out here for YouTubers, especially for, for, for women out here, just in the world in general. But especially when you start to put yourself out there like that, especially in a field that's, you know, dominated by young men, young horny men at that. And I really hope that whatever, you know, decision that was made to not do YouTube anymore was, you know, mostly them just wanting to maybe focus more on like school and college because you know when you at that college age and you have to start deciding what are you going to do with your life what kind of job do you want to have what kind of career are you looking for you know all these things that you have to start considering when you kind of reach that age and i'm hoping that that's the thing that kind of just took over and not anything else 
because it was always a lot of you know creepers out there especially creeping on her and uh, when you're dealing with people on the internet they can get pretty obsessive you know especially if you're a young lady and uh, you know I just hope that it wasn't some guy out there that decided to make it their life's work to find out any and everything they can about them because there are people like that you know they'll look at a reflection in like a shiny desk in a video and they were able to identify this one tree and this one tree only grows in this one specific part of the world and of the state of Florida and they were able to use that to kind of determine approximately where they lived and then they start giving threats and like you better stop making videos or I'm gonna do this or that you know use your imagination you know so I really hope that that wasn't the case and you know someone just kind of force them off of YouTube you know I really hope that's not what happened because that would be just really really messed up for someone to do something like that and I hope that they are doing good and they're happy and healthy wherever they are and um, hopefully we'll see them again you know at some point someday that would be great we are out here today out here riding on this here road four dollars and 19 cents for gas my goodness so there's another guy that i follow here on youtube i check out his videos mr stargill Mr. Stargell is a pretty cool guy. He um, does figure reviews and, and, and fig hunts. And uh, I've noticed that lately I've been enjoying his, his uh, fig hunts more and more because he's kind of coming into, he's kind of coming into his own, you know? And you can tell that he's getting a lot more comfortable in what he does and stuff and he, he's, he's got his own style you know and I really do like that and I was looking at his uh, live stream yesterday and it, it was kind of crazy because apparently there's some drama going on in the in his in his community there's someone that's talking pretty bad about him and he was really heated up Assuming that he doesn't take that live stream down, if you want to check it out, you know, go ahead. It, it was the live stream that was on March 30th. And uh, he kept saying, you know, like, look at the thumbnail, look at the thumbnail. And people wondering, like, man, what's, what's going on here? Why, why is he so upset? So I looked at the thumbnail and I, it looked like there was like an Instagram post that was like kind of, you know, talking a little bit bad about it so I went to that Instagram page and I looked to see exactly what was going on and it seems like there's this guy I think he's also a, a person who does toy videos on YouTube like America's Most Wanted or something I, I don't really I don't know much about him but uh, I looked at that YouTube I looked at the Instagram story and he was on Mr. Stargill's stream, one of his earlier streams from like a few days in the past. And so I went back and I looked at that live stream. And if you want to see it, um, you can look at Mr. Stargill's videos. I think it's titled like a live two, like live space two, like it was part two of a, of a live stream or something. And he had this guy on and he, he took a really strange turn because at first, you know, they were, you know, just sitting up there and just kind of shooting the breeze. And then all of a sudden this guy started saying, you know, like how much he, you know, respects Mr. Stargell and he likes him. But then he was like, 
criticizing him because he was like he, he wasn't showing people any love and he, you know just kind of saying that he's a bit of a jerk if I can paraphrase and what made it so weird is that he kind of came out of nowhere but at the same time he was still saying that you know he was being respectful but yet you know, he was dealing out all this kind of like personal criticism and you kind of tell it was kind of getting under Mr. Starge was skin a little bit here because it kind of, you know, took him for a, took him for a loop. You know, kind of took me for a loop too, took us all for a loop. And, uh, you know, the guy was also, the guy was also, he was drinking a bit. So, you know, that probably loosened his lips a little bit. It looked like he was a little bit tipsy. And then it was also at this one point he had uh, gotten this call from his job and he forgot to mute his microphone. So for a second there, you know, he, he his, was getting real close to putting out a lot of personal information. He might have even doxed himself if uh, Mr. Stargell hadn't uh, cut off his end of the live stream. But it was just really weird, you know? And so that live stream that he did yesterday, I mean, he, he was just, he was angry, you know, and, and understandably so, and he was, you know, he was aggressive, you know, he, he was cursing and everything, you know, not nothing crazy, he wasn't losing his mind or anything, but, you know, you could tell the man was upset, you know, and I, and I understand that, why he would be upset, you know, because apparently this was someone who was in the community, and they were, you know, very active, and then and all of a sudden they just kind of, you know, kind of turn like that. And it's really unfortunate, you know, and I, I wish that we could just, you know, kind of rise above all that stuff, or especially from, you know, like a personal standpoint, you know, Mr. Stargell, you know, he's, you know, like a middle-aged black man who's into figures and toys and doing YouTube videos and stuff, and I can relate because I'm the exact same way. So, you know, it's not a whole lot of us out here doing this on YouTube. So, you know, I, I would really like if, if we, you know, as a community, you know, could just help out each other more, stick with each other more, and just kind of get rid of this drama. And that's not to say, you know, like, you know, black folks with drama. I mean, because it's not like black folks are the only people who have drama from time to time, you know. You know, but I would just like to just be a, a little bit better, you know, you know, and just support each other, lift, every, li lift everybody up, you know. Um, but yeah, if you do want to check out his channel, you can just Google. This is Google Mr. Stargell, but I will warn you that he's not like me, like at all. Okay, so if... If you don't want to hear anybody cursing or if you don't want like a, a more kind of raw perspective on things because he's a, that's the best way I can describe him. He's a lot more raw. So if that type of thing doesn't bother you, then I highly recommend, you know, check out his channel to look at his toy reviews. I really do like his toy reviews. Um, and his toy hunts especially. What I like most about his toy hunts is that he's really, uh, he's really just open and free in himself. You know, I wish that I had that much confidence, you know, doing a toy hunt. And that's, you know, partially why I don't do as many of them, you know, because it's one thing to be in a store, especially if you're around other people with your phone out and, and just kind of talking to yourself. That's already kind of weird in and of itself. It feels weird. But then it gets even weirder if you really let yourself go and you really start to show your personality, you know? So it's not like you're just up there like sort of talking to yourself, like, oh, let's see what we got over here. Oh yeah, that's a really cool looking fig. Um, I think I might pick that up. If you can go from that to just, just being more boisterous with yourself, you know? And, and not really caring who's around you or who can hear you or who can see you or what are they thinking about. You don't do any of that stuff. Instead, you're just being yourself. That's amazing. And um, he's really been, like I said earlier, coming, in, coming into his own in regards to, you know, 
making toy hunts just so much entertaining you know because when you do so many toy hunts you see the same stuff all the time you know but when you can inject that personality into it and you know that you know it's not fake you're just being real yourself and you're being real about it you know love that stuff and it makes for good videos and obviously it's working because his following is growing you know but anyway uh, those are just a couple of things that i was uh, on my mind as i was getting ready to go out here today and do this little ride um so yeah if you guys check out those channels and let me know your thoughts about them you know about what the heck happened to collector's crush i hope they're doing all right i hope that she's doing safe and, and she's happy and healthy and that the guy is also happy and healthy as well um, and they're just enjoying life and just putting YouTube on the back burner, which is totally fine. You know, they don't owe anybody any explanation for what, you know, happened. You know, that's their life. They can do whatever they want with it, you know. But I just know how crazy people on the internet can be and how just over the top and unnecessary some folks can get. I know that they can be, like, really threatening at times and especially when you're uh, talking about young women, especially attractive young women, you get some real creepers out there and uh, they will go to lengths to try to find out more about them. And it makes it even more disturbing that in one of their toy hunt videos, she did mention how there was this, uh, like this guy that was kind of following her around the target, I think, you know, and he was everywhere that she was, you know, and he didn't stop to say hi, he was just kind of creeping on her, you know, so that just makes the whole thing a little bit worse, but anyway, that's it, you guys, I want to thank you so much for checking out this video, and uh, we'll do it again sometime, until then, I'm Jeremy, take care, I'll see you later.